Polaris has, without question, dominated the sports side-by-side -side marketplace since they invented it over 13 years ago. As I'm sure we're all familiar, the first Razor was a 50-inch wide 800, and while by today's standards it's not very impressive, back then it was awesome. Polaris' next step was the Razor S, which simply widened the 50-inch Razor to 60 inches and quickly became the model you needed if you wanted to go fast. In 2022, the 60-inch Razor is now called the Trail S, and while 13 years have passed since the original Razor S, the formula has stayed exactly the same. Take a 50-inch Razor and widen it by 10 inches. The Trail S really is the perfect halfway point between a 50-inch Trail and the 64-inch Razor XP, and is a hugely popular model for Polaris. The version we have here is the 1000 Premium. It's powered by a 999cc naturally aspirated parallel twin that makes 100 horsepower. Now this isn't a mind-bending number, but in a vehicle that's narrower, shorter, and lighter than the higher horsepower models, 100 ponies feels pretty dang good. This is well evidenced by the impromptu test AJ and I did when we compared the Trail S with the Pro XP. On our top secret high speed woods track, the Trail S was a mere two seconds slower than the 181 horsepower Pro on a one minute lap. To me, this highlights a couple of very important points. First, power to weight plays a huge role in overall performance. And second, more horsepower doesn't always equal more speed in the woods. When it comes to suspension, the Trail and Trail S models are the only Razor units in Polaris's lineup still using a double A-arm design out back. Is this a negative? Not in my opinion. The way the Trail S is intended to be used, on the Trail, the double A-arms were great. 13.2 inches of rear end travel and 12.25 inches of front end travel is damped by a set of two inch bodied Walker Evans needle shocks with 16 clicks of compression damping adjustability. Ride quality is definitely stiffer than on the longer travel Razor models, but by no means is it harsh. With the clicker set to full soft, the ride is actually decidedly plush. Likewise, handling with power assisted steering on the premium 1000 model is excellent. Its 79 inch wheelbase, which is actually pretty short by today's standards, makes it handle quick and feel incredibly flickable. Getting the back end out in the corners requires almost no effort at all. This shorter wheelbase also allows for a very compact turning radius, which makes maneuvering tight sections on the trail so much easier than in the larger XP models. Now, despite a slight ground clearance disadvantage, because it's shorter, it also doesn't get hung up as easily when rolling over obstacles. Last season, the Trail and Trail S models got a facelift to bring their styling in line with the rest of the Razor lineup. Now, I think this thing looks awesome. Its blunt nose and curved roll bar make for a fast but tough appearance. The interior got a mild makeover as well. Seats are comfortable, the seating position is much more upright than in the XP models. But both AJ and myself feel this is actually a huge benefit on the Trail because it offers way better sight lines out the front of the vehicle. Polaris's standard CV transmission and high-low gearbox transfer power to the ground, and a high-performance version of their on-demand true 4x4 system keeps all four wheels spinning when you need them the most. If you're shopping for a Razor Trail S, you have to make up your mind what model you want. The 900 Sport represents an unbeatable value in the sport side-by-side -side market. The only real downsides to this model, in my opinion, are the lack of power steering and the 900 motor only making 75 horsepower. However, you will also likely save a bit of money on your insurance because of the smaller displacement. The step up to the premium model we have here isn't a small one in terms of price. The difference is $2,300 US. For that, you get the 1000 motor with 25 extra horsepower, included power steering, Walker Evans adjustable needle shocks, and LED lights with cool accent lighting. Now, if you know you're gonna spend money on a roof and a stereo, two of the most popular upgrades in the industry, it really does make more sense to just upgrade all the way to the Ultimate. For an extra 1800 bucks over the premium, you get the full ride command system with seven inch display and rear view camera, Rockford Fosgate stage one audio, and a poly roof. So what's the final verdict on the Razor Trail 1000S? Is it right for you, or should you just step up to the wider, longer, and more expensive 1000 XP? If you're a trail rider who doesn't spend any time in sand dunes or on a track, the Razor Trail 1000S offers all the comfort, performance, and capability you'll ever need without the higher price tag of the larger, more powerful units. 
In my opinion, this makes it a no-brainer choice for a large number of side-by-side -side buyers.